Hello, in this video, I will show you how to create a very simple game using the Easy Game add on for Blender. So, once you have the add on installed, make sure you're in the game mode. And let's delete the default scene. So, let's start by creating a plane. And I'm going to scale the plane up a little. Okay, um, I'm going to have to switch to the GLSL viewport and let's create a new material. Just create some UV layout and let's load a color texture for our ground plane. <clears throat> and you can see it in the preview. Now let's load the normal texture which will provide the bumpiness. Now the next one I'm going to load is a glossy texture. It's a black and white texture that controls how shiny the surface is. And finally let's load in a reflection map so that the glossy part has something to reflect. So this is a fake sort of environment map. And that's it, our ground material is done. You know, let's add a few more lights. So what I've going to add is a pre-built light group that comes with the add-on. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to adjust the ground texture so that the brick texture repeats. So to do that I'm going to adjust the UV layout. And as you notice as I do that the glossy texture is also scaled which I don't want. So I'm going to actually add a second UV map. The first one is going to be used for the bricks and the second one is going to be used for the glass map as well as any other um, light map you might have. And I just need to point them to the correct UV map and there we go. Okay, just like that our brick texture repeats itself while the glossy texture is stretched over the entire plane. Let's add a camera assembly. I'm going to pick the orbit camera, just move it up a little, and go into the camera view. And we can see that it works perfectly in the game. Let's add another asset. And it's going to be this concrete divider. And let me just copy this a few times. As you can see, the soft lights I added earlier is providing a very nice sort of soft shadow around all the objects. And almost done, last one. And let's just see it in the game engine. Okay, good. All right, next up, I'm going to prepare a barrel that we can use as a projectile. So all the physics for the barrel is already set up. All we have to do is really select the camera and attach some logic brick to it. So I'm going to do that now. And notice also I moved the barrel to the second layer. So the setup is every time I press the space bar, it will shoot a barrel from the center of the camera. And I'm just going to give it a finite life so the barrels disappear after a while and give it a force so that it will shoot out of the camera. And that's it. All right, let's play this. Let's also turn on pulse mode so that I can just hold down the space bar and have a stream of barrels coming up. Like that. Okay, um, this is a bit boring right now, so let's add some smoke. The idea is every time the barrel collides with something, it will add a smoke emitter. So to do that, I'll add a pre-built smoke asset first, which is an empty, and I will set up some logic brick on the barrel itself. So the logic brick for the barrel is also going to be quite simple. It's going to be a collision sensor, 
that's attached to another um, add object actuator. So every time it collides, the barrel collides with something, it will create a smoke emitter. And by giving the particles a limited life, um, we can be sure that only a small puff of smoke is created. And now let's test it in the game engine. Let me just adjust the parameters for the particle emitters. Um, what I want is a smaller puff. So all these settings are driven, all the particles are driven by um, a script, but for the purpose of this demo, what we can do is just adjust these properties in order to change the basic behaviors of the particles. And let's test it again. So I notice what's happening right now is that the barrels are colliding with themselves and every time that happens there is a puff of smoke created. So what I actually want to do is make the collision detection work only when the barrels collide with the ground. So to do that, I am going to add the property ground to the collision sensor for the barrel. And I'm going to add the property ground to the ground object so that it will only detect collision with a certain object. So the collision sensor on the barrel would only detect collisions with the ground and nothing else. Let's add another asset to the scene just to make it more interesting. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the spark particles and I'm just going to replace the smoke with the spark. Oh, I need to move the spark to an, another layer that's not visible when I start the game. Otherwise, the sparks will not be added in. And... Just like that, we have our sparks. And finally, to finish it off, let's add a post-processing 2D filter. And what it is, is it's just an empty with a few shader attached, and we can change the basic properties of how the filter behaves using these um, numbers, using these properties, game properties on the side of the logic panel. So as you can see, I'm just trying different gamma values, contrast, saturation. If we dial down the saturation to zero, it will be a black and white scene. And if we crank it up a bit, it will be a bit more colorful than before. And as you'll also notice, right now it has all of the filters turned on by default. So you have the ambient occlusion, you have the depth of field, and you have a color post-processing. And if, if for any reason you don't want any of these effects, you can just uncheck this box and it will turn them off. Let's play this again. And there you have it. This is our finished game.